The fact is this. What's taking place in the land of promise will be a blessing for the entire world. Because, look, I will never forget, never forget what my own family suffered for their faith. I had 200 relatives in my family killed in the Holocaust on my father's side. My mother's side were all German and Austrian. My grandmother's maiden name was Fuhr. And they were, I mean, I've got one of my cousins in this incredible picture of a book, actually. I mean, it's magnificent of my family, my mother's side, my maternal side of my family, and, and all the pictures of all of our relatives that were doctors and lawyers and rabbis wiped out. But for some reason, my grandfather on my father's side and my mother's family came to the United States. So we, give to, we get to live in a nation that is the beacon of freedom. But we have an obligation to pursue liberty and freedom and proclaim the message of hope. You know, one of my favorite Favorite parables of the Bible, I should always give a disclaimer when I say this, is Luke 18. It's the parable of the unjust judge. Now, do we have any judges in here tonight? Good. I could do this. <laughs> so, I mean, think about this for a moment. This woman wanted justice so badly, so badly, that she went to the house of a judge and knocked on his door. Now I think about that. Who would do this? My mother. <laughs> but I mean, I don't go to judges' houses and knock for justice. But there was something about that pursuit of justice that made it inevitable, right? I mean, we know the, we know the story of this. And, and I want to walk you through this because it, it goes directly to what I want to ask you to do tonight. And that is support this timely and important work, not for the past 15 years of success or the past five years, but for the next 25 years. So we have to be like that woman. I mean, she wanted justice so badly that she went to the house of the judge and knocked on that door. That judge didn't fear God and didn't fear man. And that woman kept knocking. That judge, he didn't fear God. He didn't fear a man. He didn't fear this woman. She kept knocking. Didn't fear God. Didn't fear man. She kept knocking. Didn't fear God. Didn't fear man. But this woman was driving her nuts. <laughs> was driving him crazy. I had that part. But what did Jesus say? He opened the door and what did she get? She got justice because she was persistent, because she wouldn't stop knocking. Now, I'm going to ask Chuck to come on up here, because we're going to ask you to do something. I, you know, if you've told, I'm kind of an unorthodox guy. So I'm going to do something I suspect you have not done before, because I am going to pray, and on this nice tables that you're sitting at, I'm going to ask you to do something unorthodox. I want you to knock. And I want you to knock because I want us to be those that are pursuing justice, those that are pursuing freedom, those that are sharing the message of hope, those that understand how important it is that the message of the Messiah continues emanating out of the land of the Messiah. But it's going to take perseverance. It's all errors. I went through the, I've watched those videos. How many of you have seen those videos? They're, they're, it's a game changer 
in evangelism. And I don't say that. I was general counsel for Jews for Jesus. So, you know, I get it. But this is at a whole, and they continue to do great work. And, and, a lot, and so many of the Messianic ministries do such great work. I could list them all. But there's a uniqueness about the whole concept of an idea of a college to train up native Israelis for the proclamation of the message of hope. But we, all of us together, can make the next 25 years more fruitful than the last five. But it's going to take that same perseverance. So I'm going to ask you to, like I said, I'm going to ask you to do something that you're going to say, I can't imagine the Supreme Court lawyer came to Dallas, Texas to have us knock on a table. And I want you to do this. I want you to knock on the table as a reminder of the pursuit of justice, of the ability to proclaim the message of hope around the globe. When someone knocks on your door at your office or your house, think about one for Israel. Now Chuck's going to come up in a moment and, and, and give you some facts and tell you how you can support this work, but I'm going to tell you something. It's vital. It's an imperative. Look, I never thought in my wildest dreams, okay, that I would have the privilege of representing the President of the United States or arguing before the Supreme Court of the United States or being able to come to Dallas, Texas to talk about the Messiah. But in God's timing and God's plan, that's where we are at this very moment today. So I want you to, now I'm a drummer, so try to do this in rhythm, okay? <laughs> I'm going to pray, and all I want you to do is knock. Knock in agreement, knock for pursuing justice, for making sure the message of the gospel goes out, and that we're going to have that same passion and zeal, purpose, tenacity of that woman or my mother knocking on the door of that judge's house. Father, we come before you as your people, and we are knocking right here today, tonight in Dallas, Texas. We're knocking because we know that the message of hope is the message found in the Yeshua, in the Messiah, Jesus. And Father, we come before you with that same zeal, passion, persuasion, desire to see this message of hope shared. And just like that woman, we know that you will do so much more than we could ever ask for. In the name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for taking the stand you're going to stake tonight. Stand with this ministry. It is vital, not just for Israel, but for the entire world. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great night.